welcome to the Repat Podcast on Kenganda. Now, if you're new here, we have other episodes dedicated to this, so you should definitely check them out. I have two amazing guests with me here. Yeah. Uh, would you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Faiza Possible okay. from Faiza Possible Channel. Oh, the yeah. YouTube channel. In case yeah, yeah, don't yeah, know. yeah. Okay. Okay. What's up, everybody? It's your boy mm. King of Atunda. You already know me from my Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, of course. You have a TikTok? I do. I started TikTok. I was against it at first, but you wow. know, I realized that yo, I gotta get in where I fit in. You know what I'm saying? Okay, it's fine. It's okay. It's, yeah, it's all right though. I ain't doing the little dances and all that, but. Uh, <laughs> It's all right, though. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you guys watch the news or if you've been on social media. There's been a certain trend of the go back to Africa or go back to the motherland and all mm. that. Yeah. Now, are you for African-Americans coming back to Uganda, to be more specific? You know, like, do you, would you be open, you know? Faiz, I want to hear your opinion because you've never been on this show. And yeah. have you even interacted with any African-American except the one next to you? <laughs> am, I, am I your first? I've interacted with Jay. Uh, yeah, basically him. With Jay, only yeah. Jay, only Jay. Okay, okay. and then yeah. King. It's my first time. Oh, okay. okay, yeah, okay. and I'm sure you're loving it here. Oh, of course. Yeah, sure. I'm happy to be your first, by the way. Yeah, your first. <laughs> <laughs> wow, King. This is, this is a serious podcast. Okay, let's get it together. Okay. What, Faisa, tell us, what do you think? Do you think you you'll be more open to them? I'm um, relocating to Uganda. Yes, a hundred percent. Oh. I actually have about three, four reasons. Okay. Uh, first, they should come to uh, learn from Ugandans and mm. also teach Ugandans the things that Ugandans do not know. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, there are a lot of skills that they're blessed with or perhaps they've learned the other side mm. that they can come you know, and teach us here. And uh, secondly, Uganda is a lovely country, mm. really. Like he's just said, he's never hated it here. He's loved it. Yeah. So uh, I feel Ugandans are so welcoming. Mm. Yeah, so it, it's, it's fine for someone to come. And also if we look at factors like language, mm. uh, basically, here yeah, there is English we mm. does not really give them a hard time you know to blend sure. and learn the language and all of that mm. and thirdly uh, there are quite many opportunities here mm. yeah that I feel like How, uh, w- uh, could you tell us some of the opportunities that are that uh, are here there are businesses basically mm. yeah you can come and start up a business here and uh, thirdly I mean fourth yeah that's it's the fourth okay. one that's the fourth one that's the fourth one I feel like our uh, I don't know if this makes sense, but you just come and feel the sense of belonging mm. with your, you know, fellow natives. Yeah, something mm. like that. Yeah. Uganda yeah. is a very easy place to fit in. Very, yeah. very easy. Mm. Yeah, it's a very welcoming place. A lot of refugees here. Yeah. A lot of different cultures of uh, East African people that are here too. So that's one reason why I like uh, being out here. It's very, oh. very welcoming. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you say to the people who just want to come back? Because, you know, most times people follow a trend. You know, mm. they just want to say, oh, I went back to the motherland. Oh, I went back to Uganda. Yeah. Yeah. I went back to Africa. What do you say to such people who, who come here and then they see that the country is not what they expected and go back? Um, I feel like if you're coming, you should have a prepared mind. <laughs> That is it. Like you should be prepared financially, yeah. emotionally, in every way. Because much as you're excited that perhaps you're coming back home, mm. uh, not everyone is looking at you like that. Yeah, you know, true. that true. is very, very yeah. Some people are not looking at you like that. So, if you come with a mind that is not prepared, you're going to be disappointed. So mm. you need to really uh, prepare. Uh, you have to, con- you know, create some connections before you land, and of course, uh, get to learn, get to learn before you really just come here. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be disappointed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Getting to learn, maybe like hitting me up for my consultation company. I know. Get to know about the country before <laughs> yes, you decide yes. to come. King, what do you say? I think you have some friends who have come to Africa and then they had to go back. Yeah. yeah uh, because a lot of people fail to realize that uh, Africa, in particular, is a very diverse continent. So yeah. you know, all these different countries here are very unique. To, them, to themselves so a lot of times we have this misconception when we come out here that it's all the same so for example you got a lot of what we call hoteps that mm. want to come back to Africa who knows so much about Egypt and Egyptian culture okay. or uh, Kemet and Kemet culture uh, that they think that that's how it is everywhere. They think every African on the continent knows all about this African history stuff. Yeah. So when they come back here, you know, they find out that, you know, not everybody's onto, you know, things like that. For example, here in Uganda, guys are very, very um, religious here. Yeah. People aren't really into their old ways of um, their culture. You know, they know about their tribal things or stuff like that. But 
pre-colonialism, you know, not everybody's really into that kind of history or that spiritual uh, stuff. Yeah. So you get a lot of black folk who come out here who want that deep spiritual connection with Africa and they find out that, you know, folks over here is, is kind of similar to how they are back home, you know, yeah, in the West. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sometimes that also happens. So it goes back to what you say, really know you got to really study Africa before you come here. You really got to... Um, Take your time and study each country that you plan to visit mm-hmm. and find out just how diverse they are because you can't bring all that Orishas and the voodoo and all that stuff, you know, all those understandings. You come out here talking about voodoo to Ugandans. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Get a shock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, one man. thing for sure is that the culture shock is real in Uganda. Yeah, man. I feel like sometimes if you come expecting roses, um, you may get some thorns in the roses. Yeah, yeah. So you just have to be prepared for such a thing. Yes. Now, speaking of everything, thing um w- do you think african americans would be open to some ugandans going abroad you know going to like the u.s do you think that where we're, we are welcoming them as ugandans they would be welcoming to us yeah yeah <laughs> but, okay, i see I'm how it's true. coming i see how it's coming <laughs> I'm not going to lie like black folk in america we are very very negative and we can be racist towards our own people, you know, or prejudice, I would say. We can be very, very prejudiced towards African people. Yeah. But, you know, now there's a very big culture of understanding, you know, um, Afro beats is being played in America. So people are starting to listen to a lot more of the music. And when you listen to the music, the culture often comes with it. Yeah. So, you know, yes, but at the same time, I'm kind of against a lot of uh, Africans leaving their countries. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying like... Don't go, you know, visit other countries, but I'm I'm kind of against people like leaving and not ever coming back or not having plans to come back to redevelop and things of that nature. Yeah. And one of the uh, reasons why is because, like I mentioned uh, before we started, is how I've met a lot of uh, women, for example, here in Uganda, I met a lot of women here who take these jobs abroad and they go abroad, um, you know, to be housemaids or whatever kind of work it is they're doing. And they find out, you know, it's modern day slavery a lot of times and yeah. they get caught up in in, in a lot of drama mm. and they have a lot of traumatic experiences that when they come back home they have such a negative view on traveling ever again you know and they often try to um they, they tell other people you know kind of like the wrong things yeah so when you go on vacation to like europe america or things like that that's one thing when you're going for jobs abroad, you have to be very, very careful. And that's one of the reasons why I'm saying, like, I'm kind of against it because people don't really do their research when they leave. They have this uh, this fantasy of when they want to go west or they want to go to, you know, these foreign countries. They have this fantasy that is going to save their lives and, Greener you know, everything's going to be changed. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But sometimes they find out them green and pastures is really not where it's at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They find out that it's a lot more work that needs to be done in order to get to that level of success. And mm-hmm. sometimes you don't just go right into the best paying job jobs or you might have a you know a good paying job that here in ug is a way better paying job but over there that's probably like a not really a a great job and you're gonna you know really be like slaving yourself away for a paycheck and then you get caught up in the systems over there Mm -hmm. and then you really can't come back you wow. know what I'm saying? So it's it's, yeah. it's, it's loaded, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's a lot of stuff that goes with yeah. it. Yeah. Speaking of girls who go to, um, should, should we call it the Middle East? Mm. Yeah. I don't want to be called that. There's no such thing as Middle East, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you know about this popular couple on YouTube that has a maid. She was a Ugandan maid and they loved her and they were sending her off. They gave her money. She was getting married. They flew into the country, you know, yeah. love. They were present for her wedding. Even the queen of Buganda was actually at that wedding. Like oh, it was wow. a whole big thing. I think that's th- that's a success story that most people look at and think, oh, that could be me. Yeah. But yeah. luck doesn't, you know, rain, I don't know, like the luck isn't for everyone. So mm. I don't, and with the way our culture is set up, people always think, oh, what I have here isn't fine or it isn't nice. Right. So I need to go like abroad for yeah. greener pastures. Yes. You yeah. know? And like he said, the greener pastures are never green. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Faisa, what do you think? Do you know anyone who's gone um, to the Middle East? Yeah, I know quite of them. Uh, oh. But I I don't know how they're living because uh, once they go, we lose connection. True. Mm. It's like they take much, that yeah. So I don't know how, Phones, how they're living their lives. But like what you talked about, is like, it's, it's like one in a million scenario. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not for everyone there. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's like the, the first time I've seen such a thing. Mm-hmm. Like them trying to embrace, you know, uh, their maid to that extent, mm-hmm. but it's not mm-hmm. for everyone. Mm-hmm. So like he said, you really have to prepare your mind. Don't just go there. Mm-hmm. And talking of opportunities, we actually have them here. Thank I you. think we, we just need to like build ourselves more, mm-hmm. but otherwise really have them already mm-hmm. here. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the thing. You can't kind of just a land of opportunities. You just need to be strategic and have the right connections. Faiz, have you been to the US? No. Do you have hopes of going to the US? So much. Really? Yes. Yeah, so and much. what would you like to do in the US if you ever got the opportunity to go? Uh, I want to go visiting, basically. Oh, tourism. Basically, really? uh, not to live there. I love Africa so much <laughs> and I, I want to live here. Yeah. But if I'm to go there, I just want to visit, just uh, see how they live their lives mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps prove if the things we watch in the movies are actually real or something like that. Mm -hmm. But not going there for a job or to really live there. Really? Yeah, I'm Why? just adventurous. I just want to find out things. Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, of course, Africa takes the first place in my heart. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. yeah. Where was you, uh, when did you first get experience? exposed to Western culture or mm -hmm. what was it that got uh, gave you exposure to Western culture uh, in particular America uh, like soaps, movies TV yes, shows stuff like movies, that movies yes soaps I think uh, th that was in 2009 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, there was uh, Don't Mess With an Angel. Angel. But that's, that's like Mexico and what? No, it's mm. telenovela. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but basically that, that kind of life. Mm. And I think it was the first time we ever got a TV at home. So I, I began loving the life, mm. but it, it just... It drew at my attention to just know more about it, but not literally going there to live and mm. uh, settle or look for a job mm. or something like that. Yeah. So if an African-American came up to you and they wanted to marry you and take you back with them, is that a yes or no? Okay, it's a yes. It's a yes with if. Yeah, it, it's a yes with What's if. What's the if? He, he has to meet like her, you know, the kind of man that I want. I'm mm -hmm. not just, you see, some ladies get just so excited because mm -hmm. this man is from that side. So it, like, it's, it's a total yes, I'm going. You don't even consider mm -hmm. uh, some factors or anything. So if he meets uh, the man that I want to marry, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, if we have the same connection, then it's a yes because uh, we women, basically, uh, once you get a man you're going to get married to, of course, you have to like shift your whole life to the side of the man okay that that's what i believe so i, I wouldn't mind going if yeah if he meets the criteria now i have a question to ask you yeah please ask so we mentioned earlier how if black folk decide they want to come back to africa how they should do their whole research and everything about different nations in africa and uh -huh. understand the culture do you feel like it's important for you to do the same thing when you want to go to america do you think you should know where this guy comes from what city what state if he comes from the projects if he comes from the suburbs things like that do you think that is a factor that you should research? Yes. Or it doesn't really matter just because it comes from America? Does matter a lot, actually. Uh, that mm. is where most people lose it. You know, uh, I don't know. I don't know how true this is. Maybe we'll have to connect uh, <laughs> at length uh -huh. to, to learn about certain things. But they say our... The African Americans who come here, or even Americans who come here, are actually struggling the other side. Oh yeah. I don't know how true that is. I'm yet to learn about that. But mm. they say that the the ones that are struggling. So he comes, but a girl, uh, an innocent girl out here, is just looking for someone from another part of the world. I wouldn't say and they struggling. Don't consider that. I yeah. wouldn't say struggling. I mm. would say that some Americans who are absolute losers. In America, losers. Yeah, mm -hmm. they'll come here to places like Africa or third world countries. Yeah, and they're winners. You True. just because of the fact that they come from abroad. Yeah, but you don't know nothing about these people. You don't yeah, know where they come yeah, from, yeah. their lifestyles or anything. They're probably the goofiest, corniest people you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, but when they come to Africa, all of a sudden they're kings and queens. Yeah, you understand. True. That's the 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 common misconception. Yeah, and that's actually very common. I hate to say it this way, but. I've met a lot of uh, non-melanated people, I would say it like that, non-melanated people oh, okay. who basically are not decent people in America. And they come to Africa and they live this life of extravagance and they elevate themselves so high. And you know, it's crazy. Ugandans, it, I've experienced it so much. Yeah. Ugandans treat non-melanated people in some in some respects, uh, well, so in some aspects, a lot better than they would melanated people. Yeah, and yeah, true. These guys would not get that treatment in America. Yeah, and they know this, so they come out here and they find 
these little girls in the village or mm-hmm. they find these little young slave queens and stuff like that. They can provide whatever it is they ask, whatever that slave yeah. queen is asking for. She wants nails, hair, hair, whatever. It's so low. It's yeah. so low. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And these girls, they think, oh my God, this guy, he's going to take me back to his country yeah. and we're going to live like this and live like that only to find out that he's a hood rat. Like he's a redneck or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And you know, he doesn't come from much at all. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You guys probably don't know this, but we have projects in America, too. We we have the ghettos in America, too. Yeah. And one of the differences between our ghettos and your ghettos is that our ghettos were designed to be what they are, meaning that governments and, uh, and agencies and, and corporations and things like that, they built these things to be in the conditions that they are. Yeah. Your ghettos actually weren't really designed like that. Your ghettos, I mean, people buy their plots, they they build however they build, they have their money. Yeah. You know, sometimes they don't finish their building, so you have half a building that's not finished right next to you. Mm. Then you got shacks over here on this side. And the government really doesn't really put too many regulations on that. In America, yeah. they do. They put a lot of regulations on stuff like that. So mm. I say all that to say that you guys really should know the type of people that you're dealing with. And sometimes you won't know this because Mm -hmm. you guys are over fantasized Americans or you over fantasize the Western culture. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? So that's a, that's a red flag that you guys got to really start looking out for. You understand? True, true, true. I think we we should have a podcast titled why the non melanated people are seen as gods in Africa. Yeah. Yeah, True. Yeah. For for the future. But do you think what he's saying is true? As a, as very a dog. Very, very true. Mm-hmm. Have you very, seen something like that? True. Yes, I've seen that. I have, but of course, uh, I can't mention it, but it happens. Uh, okay. and, it, and it's so common. Yeah. And at the end of the day, uh, okay, this is sad, but there is a story where I read someone even got killed. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Because they didn't know this person. Yeah, they didn't know this person. But because of perhaps their color or the accent, they're using all the money they're able to provide because mm-hmm. much as the other side or the, the standards of living is high and uh, perhaps the disadvantage somehow when they come here, uh, the standard of living is low. So they, they're mm-hmm. able to provide for this girl. And before you know it, you're just a victim of circumstance. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's I got a question uh, to ask you guys. Yeah, it's it's kind of uh, off subject to this, but how do you feel about foreigners coming over here to Africa and adopting these little brown babies. <laughs> how do you how do you feel the about that? Adopting pads. How do you feel about yeah. that? Because I, I've seen that yeah. many times. Like, uh, especially it's more common with non-melanated people. But I've seen that so many times. Like, they'll come here and adopt, you know, adopt little kids or whatever. And yeah. sometimes they take care of these kids, and and they actually do good things for the children. But then yeah. there's the, the other side of it, you know, human trafficking and things of that nature. You know, yeah. what I'm saying getting their own personal little slave and stuff like that. Yeah. So I want to know how y'all feel about that. Do you do you think that uh, it should be allowed? Or is that something that should be very closely watched? I think it's something that should be very closely watched because sadly in this country, I don't think um, the rules and I don't think the law governing that are that strict. I feel like if you have the right money and talk to the right people, you could get away with so much. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you could probably get like five brown babies and just have them on your way back. Because there's yeah. a lot of orphans in, in African countries. Like yeah. it's, it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And like no one will, will but no one will say anything. They'll think you actually, oh, you're saved. Oh, the non-melanated person saw you and you're going to have a better life and whatnot. I think it's something that should be closely watched because mm. there are also some people who have come and adopted these babies and the baby's actually doing fine. Yeah. But then on the other hand, up people who come on and then just get the babies, for sure, like social media, oh, I have yeah, yeah, a yeah. melanated baby and yeah, a brown yeah, baby and that's yeah, it yeah that's 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 it okay Faisa, what do you think yeah it should be closely watched mm-hmm. i mean uh at the end of the day or uh, okay if you watch what happens with such scenarios mm-hmm. on social media mm-hmm. me i feel like they're also just trying to show that oh, I, I can actually also live uh, w- with this kind of a child, mm-hmm. but it's not really I love this child right mm-hmm. from my heart or something. Mm-hmm. They're just trying to, it's it's a show. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a show to, for me. For the yeah. public eye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, King of Tunda, you've been here f- f- five years. Three. Oh my God, that's going to be like five soon. years? Yeah. yeah, true, you get that. <laughs> Even your accent is it's changing, so, by yeah, the way. It's changing. Yeah, it's changing. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you I'll ask- be having to switch it up here and there because, you know, like I said, when I first came here, I'm from the South, so... Yeah. Uh, Virginia is the South, so I don't want to hear nothing. I don't hear nothing that nobody got to say in the comment section. Virginia yeah. is the South. Yeah. yeah. So... I used to have like a really uh, thick uh, southern accent. Yeah. And yo, Ugandans would struggle with my English. <laughs> Imagine me trying to get a Boda Boda yeah. with my, my, my southern little country talk. Guys yeah. are like, eh. 
<laughs> like they just can't even understand what I'm saying. So I had to, you know, tone it down a bit and really be more conscious of uh, the words that I'm saying. Yeah. Um, give us five things you'd tell to the African-Americans who plan on coming to Uganda in the future. Five things. Yeah. Um, get your money right. Get your head right. True. Uh, have patience because uh, nothing's going to move when you want it to move and moves when it once when it moves yeah 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 <laughs> or, you know um yeah. what's that that's three yeah yeah money right here right have patience uh let's see really have a plan and more than one plan too because I, I mentioned this several times I have more than one plan because if one doesn't work out you know you always have backups and stuff yeah. like that yeah and it really goes down to doing your research out here if you do your research out here you can plan properly you know mm -hmm. that's one of the things I, I believe in you know uh doing the research where wherever it is you go uh, researching the language, culture, financial uh, status of the country, whether the country is growing in finances or whether it's reducing in finances, you know, mm -hmm. look at the poverty rates and things of that nature. Um, and last but not least, uh, if you're coming out here for like love or something of that nature, like you met your little chick on Tinder and y'all been dating for like four or five years or whatever, and you finally want to come out here, understand the culture behind that stuff. Understand the culture behind marriage, behind love and, 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 you know, uh, paying dowries and things of that nature because, yeah. you know, some sometimes, you know, people are very, very serious about that. And I've seen, like, people get violent behind that, too. True. Mm -hmm. I've seen, like, guys show up to weddings, you know, and families are expecting a big extravagant thing from this, this foreigner and you're only putting out, like, you know, potion and beans and stuff like that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Some people are actually okay with that. Yeah. But there are other families who really are not okay with that at all and they really want the best for their child or, you know, the best for their families as well. And you have to understand when you're marrying an African family, you're marrying you're marrying the whole family basically. You're you're yeah. taking on everybody. So yeah. that stuff y'all really gotta know that when y'all come out here. Yeah. That's not one of them things where you can just come out here and you know find your little chick or whatever you put a ring on the finger and then that's the end of it now nah, you got to go talk to the mom and the daddy and the auntie the uncles and the whole cousins and everybody in them basically mm -hmm. okay Pfizer, <laughs> give us the five things you tell um to any african-american hoping to come to uganda in the future okay i think i'd mentioned four already oh. <laughs> <laughs> Then you tell us yes, again in case people are taking notes. <laughs> people want to come to the country, okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, first, uh, I don't know if I'm going to follow the order, but there are opportunities down here. Mm -hmm. The things they should consider. Yeah. Like the advice, what advice would you give someone coming in? Yeah. You know, uh, I'm like just survival and whatnot. Yeah. I'm just going to add to what he said. Mm -hmm. You need to be financially stable, surely. <laughs> yeah, because like I said, much as you feel like you're really coming home, not everyone is looking at you like that. Right. Uh, I, I think I've, I've been watching the previous uh, podcasts mm -hmm. where uh, they were complaining about prices uh, mm -hmm. and also about uh, a men charging higher yeah. than the normal people. So, and you can't avoid that to some extent. So you really need to have like more okay. to your pocket. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So you, you need to. Yeah. Uh, that is one. And secondly, come to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, adding on the married thing, you know. Uh, I don't know how it's done that side, but I know they don't consider a lot of the African aspect of the marriage stuff. So you need to come. If you want to marry someone, definitely you need to learn how the whole thing, you know, is wired here. And then you you get to do it the way they do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. Uh, what else can I say? Prepare for anything, okay. definitely. They might not yeah. be all, yeah, but just prepare for the worst yeah. and the good. Yeah. yeah, and maybe I would also pose this question. I don't know if it's the right place. You pause, it's okay. Oh, um, they, they say there are, there are some uh, African-Americans or basically foreigners, uh -huh. yeah, who come here and uh, they, they want to marry someone just because they need a certain document. Oh, a visa? Yeah, something like that. Uh, uh, so King of what is marriage for a document? <laughs> yes. Oh, I think actually, a visa to stay in the country for yeah, that to stay long. in the country. That's the easiest way to get a Ugandan visa. Actually. Yeah, but men often they they find out that it's it's complete opposite for men. Like a man can't do that, but a woman can. A woman mm -hmm. can come here to marry a Ugandan and get a dual citizenship faster than a man can. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's because of uh, dependency. Okay, they have dependency laws here to where a woman can come here marry a man and she'll be a dependent of that man but vice versa and, and the woman will get um dual citizenship and everything like that and she'll become a citizen faster but vice versa a man can't do that uh the woman will be a dependent upon the man so you cannot get 
a dual citizenship visa just like that. It takes years. Uh, I think it's like four or five years, something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to like prove you're actually, you know, in a committed relationship. And I think you have to stay here too mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time. Then yeah. you can uh, get that. Yeah. So it's not just that simple. You can't just come over here and, and do stuff married. like that. Okay. But there are contract marriages out there though. There are people yeah. who do stuff like that, you know, vice versa. Like, for example, if um, you guys, you want to go to America, you know, something of that nature, you know, there are contract marriages where, People will say, okay, yeah, we can get married or whatever. You know, I'll help you get your green card. You know, oh, of yeah. course, you're going to get something out of okay. it. Okay. You know, so that does exist. I'm not saying it doesn't. It does yeah. exist. But yeah, here think, in UG, you, you just can't come do that as a man. Yeah. I think getting a, a visa that permanently is a bit hard in this country. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's the, the, the process is a bit, it's tiresome and you spend. So th that makes it a bit simple. <laughs> no, that makes it hard because you can't just. Come. I mean, if you're to marry someone, of course, so uh, oh, within yeah. the time, definitely the marriage. Um, then I think my points on um, advice to a foreigner who's coming, you know, to the country and how they can survive. I think uh, the points are the same. You yeah. know, patience. You need to have patience. I'm. If you are a big complainer, this country will wear you down. Mm -hmm. You are going to get depressed yeah, and man. mad and you yeah. will cry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have patience. Uh, uh, my country people are just, there are certain things that won't move the way you want them to move, <laughs> like he said. Yeah. And you may have a plan and then it's like, no, you need to have a plan B and, you know, prepare for everything. And again, B, financial C. stability yeah. and have something you're going to do. Do not just, if you're coming to tour, well and good. But if you're planning on relocating and all that, you need to have something that brings in income. Yeah. On yeah. a yeah. regular basis. Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, I think the points are much more of the same. Do you guys have anything you want to add? Uh, for folks coming here or people leaving? Oh, in general, like the topic um, in general. Yeah. I would say wherever it is you plan to go in the world, you know, always do your research, of course. Mm -hmm. But traveling really isn't for everybody. And some people don't find that out until they really, you know, start traveling and moving around. They see that, you know, they take certain things for granted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's another thing I've, I've noticed, too. Um, a lot of folks come out here to Africa to find themselves, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, they come here to experience, the, you know... African poverty or, or whatever it is that, you know, they experience in Africa and then they go back to America and they're yeah. all auto automatically renewed. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't like stuff like that. I don't agree with it because, you know, touring in Africa is okay. You want to go see the beauty of Africa. That's one thing. But then, you know, you go down to the ghetto and you see the little, you know, poor people and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And you want to, you feel like empowered to, you want to give back or something like that. Sometimes that's not really necessary unless you're coming to do business. If you're coming here to, create a path to help these people get out of poverty that's one thing but if you're coming here to make yourself feel better about life you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah and that's yeah. that's kind of fucked up you know yeah, what i'm saying so traveling you know like i said is really not for everybody because not everybody travels for the right reasons and when you come to africa you get humbled very quickly True. so <laughs> you know your reasons for why you're traveling and, and don't don't be a stereotype and don't come out here uh, with that that God complex. Like you're coming here to mm -hmm. save the, the poor people or something of that yeah. nature. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you want to go to the jungle, go to the jungle. Just don't go to the jungle and take pictures of the people, you know, like the human zoos and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, like, for example, you know how they got these guys, um, when foreigners come here, they take uh, tours of Kamocha. They go to the ghetto of Kamocha. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, that to me is nothing more than a human yeah. zoo. You're taking the foreigners around to the ghetto to see and all the ghetto people. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And it's cool to get a little bit of exposure to the ghetto, but at the same time, like, the people don't benefit from that. Yeah. You're just putting them on social media and then the whole world just seeing, like, the worst side of, of Uganda, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's what I mean. Like, y'all really got to be careful what y'all doing because these images create a narrative and that narrative sticks with certain people. True. True. You know. Wow, that, that was nice. Speaking of having a God um, concept, did you say God concept or a superior complex, concept? Complex, yeah. yeah. Superiority complex, yeah. yeah. When you talk to someone and then you think you're so big for them, I think that's yeah. something most foreigners actually do. Let's call yeah. it what it yeah. is. They yeah. do that. And when yeah. Americans speaking, do a lot. Americans yeah, do a lot. Yeah, when they're speaking to an African, then it's like, ah, they don't understand. Oh, you understand. <laughs> but then you find out, and in, in if you speak the African language, like Luganda, for yeah. example, man, you guys are very bright. Yeah. It's just that we hear the English, and you know, you guys don't really aren't so great with English. So we we think that that shows your intelligence. True. But you know, you you got this. Like you guys know like four or five fucking languages. Yeah. yeah. That I, shows your intelligence. You actually, know what I'm saying? no seven. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not about me. But <laughs> no. But come up to like, I want to to disagree with you because I think a normal Ugandan knows English really well. 
I feel like if you go you to school, you guys think you know English really to well. University, then I think you you do know English. You think you know English really well, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, and I'm not saying it to disrespect anybody because English is not your language. So I don't ever think that you should be experts at it. But at the same time, like. You guys aren't that great with it. Oh my god, guys! I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm yeah. going to talk to him after this. We're going to have a one on one because he can't just be saying all this out here. At the end of the day, guys, just be humble. Uh, talk oh to god. people normally and just do yeah. your yeah. best. Yeah. All right, guys. I think yeah. I think we sign up. We are signing out right yeah. now. My guests were amazing. You guys are amazing. We're going to have you here back again because Appreciate wow, it. you guys it. are intelligent. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, I like these for, topics. Yeah, tell the people to follow you, like your social media and whatnot. Oh yeah, you guys can follow me on TikTok King underscore Obatunda. You can follow me on Instagram and YouTube at King Obatunda, mm-hmm. and that's pretty much it. I'm not on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> Pfizer. Yeah, Pfizer possible on YouTube, uh-huh. Pfizer possible on Twitter, yeah. Pfizer possible on uh, TikTok, yeah. Instagram, everywhere, Pfizer yeah. possible. Yeah. We'll have um, everything linked down below. Because, you know, when someone hears Pfizer, they think of the vaccine. Because <laughs> oh when you God. told me your name the first time, I was like, that, oh, uh, yeah. The, the Pfizer spellings are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it will be right there down below so you can get it all there all right guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you do like this video and subscribe to our youtube channel that is kenganda follow us on all our social media pages kenganda nation instagram facebook and twitter we also have kim the comic who is dropping a song okay at the end of this month on his youtube channel so make sure you check that out out. my name is janita we'll see you guys next time peace